Turkish Republic as an administrative system is a republic. So the administration is very similar to France. As you know, France has 100 departments. So Turkey has 81 different departments. And one of these departments is Mula. Another one was Antalya. You can notice if you look at the first two numbers of the license plates, they represent the department where they are registered. So, for example, uh, our bus starts with 07. It's for Antalya. 34 is Istanbul. Uh, 06 is Ankara, and so on and so forth. So, Mula is the big city where all the small si uh, towns that we saw on the road and uh, cities like Marmaris, which is a little bit... And uh, you'll see that for those of you that have seen Cappadocia, it looks a little bit like Cappadocia. But uh, it, it, it is a, a special type of erosion on the stones. And the geologists say this is due to the uh, magnetic magnetism inside the stone that it is eroded in this fashion so you'll see uh, it's it's like if it was made by hand uh, one stone on top of each other and every single stone is kind of like circular or round the array of different agricultural products that are grown here uh, among them well you've seen the orange trees and things like that but next to that there is a very large variety hazelnut for example uh, turkey produces 80 percent of the world production of hazelnuts uh, tea Strange formation of rocks, apparently caused by magnetism in the rocks. Looks as if one rock is put on top of another by hand. It goes in layers, doesn't it? Looks like a work of art, doesn't it? It doesn't really look like rock. <laughs> In, in very big letters DSI, uh, which means Turkish Devlet Suishleri. So that's the department that takes care of the water in Turkey. It's down there. stations that use the steam to make electricity so it's an alternative form of uh, making electricity 
So uh, on the right hand side a little bit further uh, you'll see a steam power station. We call it a geothermal power station. Some sinks in the wet. There's a thermal power station. No, you've ruined it. I don't know what that is. Someone's killed it, uh, burning his rubbish in his garden. And you can see one of these stations on the left hand side. That's the steam that is coming out and how the steam is channeled through these pipes. But there's one on the right hand side all the way in the back also. Energy. Angela Riffin has spoken. Yes, you say it was. Angela Riffin. Wish you were here. start our day by visiting Ephesus. So we'll start with Ephesus in the morning and then afterwards we'll visit uh, the, the, rim, the, the foundations only is left of the Artemis temple, the Artemision. And then uh, we'll visit the Isa Bay Mosque. And then from that point on, uh, those that have uh, purchased the 110 pound package, there will be a from uh, what uh, we call the Acropolis. This means the high city. And at the time <laughs> when this was an ancient Greek city, the Acropolis was the place that the people came. It was the administrative area. Oops, I'm sorry. Like. And uh, basically this space that you see uh, just beyond uh, this walking path, where you have those trees in the back, that is, that was the political agora. So that would be just like we saw in Zantos, the space where people would come to vote. Uh, at the time when there was democracy in the ancient Greek times, and uh, all the and uh, Androcles was looking for a place to build his city. And he went, naturally, in those years, people to see their future, to see their destiny, would go to the Temple of Apollon. And in the Temple of Apollon, you had oracles that would come to see you. They would talk with you for a while, and then they would go into a separate room and go to structures. And from... So, this is the entry of the city. So, at that time, you have to imagine when you are traveling, from one place to another, yeah. either you're walking or you're coming with a horse. Yeah. In both cases, uh, you get dirty. <coughs> if you're uh, more distance than 20 miles. Uh, so uh, the Romans don't like that. So if you are dirty and you enter into the city, they say go to the Roman bath first. 
take a bath. Yeah. And then there's no spring water here in this region, but there is a spring water in the <coughs> mountains behind us. And uh, there is actually an aqueduct that brings the water into the city. It's about uh, 12 miles long, roughly. And that's one of the specialties of the Romans, as you know. They carry water on these water bridges into the city. And you've probably seen as you walk through there, there are pipe, pipes that yeah. used to bring the water into the city. And there are more examples of the, those cer uh, ceramic uh, pipes that we have. So when you look at this road, you'll notice that there are columns on both sides of the road. This is how we know that this used to be the main road. And this main road crosses the city. Have a main street, if you like. In the uh, as you can see, it has been carved and there are like a rectangle and there are small uh, circles that yeah. are built. Uh, archaeologists tell us that this is actually kind of like the ancestor of the backgammon. Oh. Yeah. So people would actually play, play. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to pass their time here. Uh, and yeah. you'll see uh, uh, other examples of this as we mm. go through. You can see the head of the columns that are represented over here. And, well, you can see that this animal here, this is a toro. The toro, uh, at the beginning it was a cult that people prayed to, and later on, with the beginning of the mother goddess, the idea of mother goddess, the bull becomes a representative, a representative of power. So that's to show you the power of the Roman Empire. Basically, you would have all these bulls on top of these uh, of these columns. So <laughs> 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 you know. First few, you know, uh, first few steps uh, is the original stone, is the original Odeon that was discovered under the earth and was taken out. And then the rest of it, the top uh, stairs, have been renovated afterwards. But as you can see, the renovation isn't very good. Uh, the reason for that is that because the Turkish people are not good at renovation. It's because this site has been an archaeological site for 120 years. So 120 years ago, the technology of reconstruction was not as it is today. And so therefore, the, you can see that the top has been renovated in a very simple way. At the bottom, you can see what it used to look like. And you notice that there are uh, foots of lion on the side of the stairs. Yeah. That is a symbol, very specific, that it was a Roman structure. And we know that this used to have a triangular wooden roof. Um, we know that because there is no drainage system <coughs> in the structure. Uh -huh. I mean, if it didn't have a... Uh, the, the, the seat under you is carved to the inside. So normally it should be straight, like it is here. But the traditional one, it is carved, you see, mm -hmm. towards the inside. And thus, you can have more people sitting in the same space uh, compared to if it were straight down. This would be... Uh, when they were listening to music uh, outside of its use as a parliament. Mm. So, let's continue. Ladies and gentlemen, in front of you, this structure that we see here is a small temple of Artemis. It's a small temple of Artemis. At the same time, it is known as the temple of the city. Because the people of Ephesus believed that Artemis used to uh, protect the people of Ephesus.
and thus therefore uh, in this uh, high city there, there was a small temple that was built for it and uh, right next to the left hand side you can see these two big columns that's where the building of the city hall was so the city hall building over there now uh, of course the thing that we notice here are the different types of columns now uh, this type uh, just in where you have these circles that are twirling inside each other. Yeah. Well, that is what we call an Ionian <coughs> column. And, like me, <laughs> yeah. that's the Doric style. Yeah. So the Doric style, the Ionian style, and if you look between these two, Ionian, which is the Corinthian style. So these are the three <laughs> different types of columns that we use in the ancient Greek period. Doric, Ionian, and Corinthian. So we are able, Ionia is Ephesus. And so this column with that circling or the twirling in, on the sides was actually invented. Look at this, isn't this wonderful? It's all wonderful. The, the, the actual walking on the, the spot here. Yeah, they would have walked. The, um, the place where um, they were playing, um, you know, what's their mud on? Yeah. It's got me, yeah. uh, it's given me enough to think about for a few days. Yes. Some reason to pull Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there'll be something underneath. And here, uh, you have uh, a panel <coughs> which shows you processional way, as they say. It's the religious road, if you like. And uh, I don't know if you notice on the map, uh, we're just at, uh, at the bottom of it, where there's the blue spot with an eye in blue <coughs> color, somewhere over there. And you can see on the right-hand top side, that's where the Temple of Artemis is. And so, from the Temple of Artemis into the city, from the uh, from the bottom and uh, going all through the main street and going back to the temple of Artemis that is the way that there is a statue this is a statue of the goddess Artemis so you'll notice that she has multiple breasts because she is the goddess of fertility and so therefore hole in the middle here okay now <coughs> and there are uh, rings well there used to be one over there and one over here also so equal distance from each other and here you used to have the Olympic flame oh. that was held by uh, with chains to these hooks <coughs> on the four sides and it would be burning <coughs> 24 hours <coughs> non-stop and uh, and so it was kind of like a lantern that had the most number of gold medals would be the capital of that province. That's how they chose the capital. And so therefore the strongest city, naturally. With the bag is the photographer. <laughs> and the holes that are made, this is made specifically so that you don't slip on rainy days. <coughs> <laughs> Slightly nice, however. The facility is very nice. Let's investigate. An internet connection. Oh, okay. No internet connection. Huh? Here's our little resident mermaid. Very nice. Very pretty.
tennis courts outside Eaton area. Very picturesque. It's yellow brick road time again. Yeah, Linda's in there in the lounge. Now I'm in the pool. Get to eroticism. Very nice. Little ch children's area. Oh, own private little beach. Very nice. A little sun trap down there. Uh, just steps down to the beach. And it is a beach as opposed to sand, but very fine and pebbled. But there is a lift. I'll have to ask Cal Linda and maybe she can bear. It's very pretty and very hot. I would think down here about 25 degrees. It certainly feels like it. Lovely. A little bit of a climb. Helps to burn off the beef burger. It's a lovely shot of our hotel. Very pretty. Me and myself sitting on the bench. And a little group of rather nice horses. A little bit further down. I'm out of breath. I've just climbed up from the beach. Learn your English. Yeah? Some of you even said, well, it has an American accent. Yeah? So, uh, let me uh, try to explain. Well, I, I was born in Istanbul, uh, in the big city. And uh, in the 1970s, so in 1975, approximately. And so um, those years in Turkey were not so were not so bright, it's, uh, especially uh, towards the end of the 60s, the 68 to 72. As you know, there were uh, student movements all over the world, basically. But the movements here in Turkey. Uh, they went a little too far. So there were two fractions, left wing and right wing, and uh, well, under them there are growing strawberries. Now, in a few moments, we'll arrive to the uh, parking area, the bus parking area. And there is a very interesting system here, is that we leave our bus in the parking area, and there's a, a kind of a, a another bus that brings us from the parking. Times are hard now. We have the tractor to pull us. Little kitties. Cats are covered. 
As is your head. We will begin, and uh, this will be again the point where you will come back to. So, uh, just where we are, just behind you over there, <coughs> this is an Aphrodisias Musee. This is the museum. So, therefore, all artifacts that have been found on this site, on the ancient site of the city, uh, they are all, you can see them all inside the museum. So, it is part of the, uh, our visit. This is what we call a Sebastopol. Sebastopol. Now, Sebastopol is very interesting. In the time of the Roman Empire, it is the building where the Roman Empire will make his propaganda. And basically, on the walls of the Sebastopol, you will see the engraving of the achievements of the Roman Empire. And so, um, most of those, uh, that section that you see over there, has been renovated. So you can see as it was originally, but not all the pieces. The rest of the pieces are inside the museum. In the back section, you can see all the different events that used to be explained to the people. And the section that has been renovated that you see from here, that is... Uh, <laughs> the conquest of London, oh. of the oh. Roman Empire. Londinium. Oh. Londinium. <laughs> Londinium. Londinium, yes. So uh, that's quite interesting. That section <coughs> has been renovated. The rest of the sections, as I said, inside, are inside the museum. You Wonderful structure. This is what we call a tetrapilon. Uh, what it means basically is that it is four <laughs> columns by four columns. And it is the main entry door of the city of Aphrodisias. So you have to imagine that the city walls actually continued like this to its left and to its right. And uh, the structure, well, it's just very similar to what we saw in Ephesus yesterday. If you remember the temple of Hadrian, triangle mm. which is held together by the two columns on the outside, outsides, and uh, the arch in the middle, uh, held by two columns on the inside, times four makes it 16 uh, columns. Now, uh, if there is a color difference, uh, this is because they weren't able to find all the pieces, so the missing pieces were made with uh, cement. Now, right to the left of this, where you have that, those trees over there, uh, uh, that is the grave of the archaeologist, oh, yeah. Mr. Kenan Erim, uh, professor at the University of Chicago. So, if you like, we can go down these steps and uh, <coughs> enter into the city by the door. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, these columns How that you see is them? typical Roman architecture. Uh, these rays with a 45 degree angle. Uh, the ancient Greek were not all the way in the back. Mm. And it's on the same axe as the entry door. Huh? And that's the temple of Aphrodite. Oh. So it's on the same line as the main entry door. <laughs> well, if you like, you can go through it or you can go around it if you don't want to. You know. <laughs> 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 We're going to go off this road.
Go! Oh, look at some motorway. <laughs> yeah. Not big. So that's it then, Zenith, is it? That's it, like that. That's it, yeah. That's all you get, I'm afraid. A pile of bricks. <laughs> Another Lego set. Oh, it's a stone carrier. <laughs> You know, once I asked the driver, you know, do you know where there is, is over here? And all that. <laughs> It'd be lovely when it's finished. You think so. about things. Now, this is the stadium of Aphrodisias, and it is the biggest stadium that exists in Turkey. It's roughly about 2,100 years old. It is a Roman uh, structure, uh, and it's about two football fields large and uh, it can hold 36,000 people wow. so even today in the modern times 36,000 stadium is a big deal yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> who would you like to bet <laughs> so you had actual bookkeepers inside the stadium gambling and this was secretly uh, financed by the Roman aristocrats. So in that sense, frontier of the city, the wall continues over there. You can see it a little bit further. And it continues until the main door that we saw. A little bit further. The arches, is that the wall? Yeah, that's part of the wall. You see, uh, those arches existed behind you also. Uh, what they, the reason why over here, where you could put a wooden stick also, and you would have a parasol uh, inside the, the, the stadium. Hmm. Which are the gladiators? Depends where you're sitting. <laughs> it depends where you're sitting. That's an extra expensive seat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, plus, from time to time, as you might know, the gladiators didn't always fight each other. Sometimes they fought wild animals. Yeah. yeah. So for that reason, that section was was closed, basically, uh, if there were any wild animals. <laughs> or the ancestor of it. You can buy a flood so you can down a bit. Not anymore. No. <laughs> Silk threads. As you might know, silk is the strongest material that exists in nature, <coughs> and so they would make they would make threads. Of course, not very thin, quite large, and they would start to cut it right here slowly, and they would water it from time to time. And uh, marble is like a vase, if you can think of it as if it was built, and there's a hole here.